We implemented static generation on the index.js and the event id.js pages. Now let's take a closer look. It works, but maybe we can optimize it. For example, on the starting page, so this index.js page, we are pre-generating this page with the prefetched data, so to say. But of course, this data will then only update if we build again. So if our page was deployed for a couple of hours or even days, and we have new featured events, we need to redeploy our page to reflect that latest state. That's not ideal. And one possible workaround could be to use get server side props instead. Then for every incoming request, we would pre-render the page again on the fly. But this would be overkill here. We don't need to pre-generate this for every request. Just a couple of times, maybe after a certain time span. And that's where we can add the revalidate key to this object which we return side by side to the props key. And we can set this to a value of our choice to 10 seconds, 100 seconds, 10 minutes, whatever makes sense to you. Now our events and the featured events probably don't change that often. And it's not the end of the world if we did update them and our starting page doesn't immediately reflect this. So maybe every 1800 seconds is a good time span. That means that every half hour we regenerate this page for a new incoming request. And I think that should work quite well here. With that, this page still works, but in production it would be regenerated from time to time, at most once every half hour. Now for event ID, we also could consider revalidating, because there it's similar. If the details about an event changed, we don't reflect this on our page because we never regenerate it. Again, we could use server-side rendering for that, or we add client-side data fetching so that we have some initial data and we then update this with the client-side data. But we could also go for revalidating instead here. And here I will also set revalidate to a certain interval. Now I will not go for half an hour here, because for example if the date changes, that's more important than the general list of featured events. It's still okay if it's slightly outdated, but I want to be more accurate than on the starting page. So I'll set this, let's say, to 30 seconds, so that if a new request comes in and it's more than 30 seconds since the page was last generated, it will be generated again. I think that's a setting that makes sense here. Of course you can also go for a different duration if that makes more sense to you though. Or alternatively, you solve this with client-side data fetching in addition to the pre-rendering here. Now I also have an optimization idea regarding get static paths. Currently we're fetching all events here. Now in our case that's only free events. But on a real page we could of course have hundreds or thousands of events. So fetching all those events to pre-generate all those pages could be a huge waste. That might really be redundant and could lead to performance issues. So in reality, we might want to just pre-render our featured events, because those are more likely to be visited because they're featured on the starting page. So therefore here, in event ID on this event ID page, instead of fetching all events and pre-rendering all the pages, all the detail pages for all events, I will instead just load my featured events and therefore import get featured events from the API util helper file. And then just simply execute get featured events down there. But now with that, of course, that implies that for some events, the page will not be pre-generated. So if we leave fallback set to false, we'll have an issue. If I click on some event which was not pre-generated, like this event with an ID of E1, I get a 404 error 
even though we have data for this event. But we didn't define it in advance and therefore it wasn't pre-generated. And since we tell Next.js that we did prepare all required pages here, that's what we tell Next.js with fallback false, it shows us a 404 page here. So the correct setting here would be true, telling Next.js that there are more pages than the ones we prepared here. Then it will try to dynamically generate the page if it encounters a page which was not pre-generated before. Now if we do that, it works. Now we see no event found initially until the event was fetched because we are checking if we don't have an event and then we show this fallback. And that's good, we should show a fallback content whilst we are waiting for the event to arrive. But here it might be better to show some loading spinner or some loading text instead of an error. Because here it's now actually expected for some events, which haven't been pre-generated, that we don't have them right from the start. So instead of wrapping this into an error alert, I'll wrap this in a regular div instead and give that div a class name of center, which is a globally available class name defined in the globals CSS file. And I'll then say loading instead of no event found. And therefore now if we reload, we see loading until the event is there. So that's better. Alternatively, of course, we set fallback not to true, but to blocking. In that case, Next.js will not serve anything until we're done generating this page. So if I do that and reload, then loading the page takes a bit longer, but we get the entire finished page right from the start. It's up to you which user experience you want on your page. I'll stick to this blocking approach but you can go for either of the two. And these were a couple of small optimization steps which I did want to implement. Now with that, let's go back to the two remaining pages we have, maybe first to the index.js page in the events folder, and let's make sure we also pre-render those correctly with data which is fetched in advance. Try implementing it on your own, we'll do it together in the next lecture.